Hey, welcome back to Robinson Foundry. I recently made this solid copper sledgehammer and I think it turned out really cool looking. I like it so much that I decided to make another one, but this time out of brass. To start making the brass head, first I needed to create a pattern that I could use to make a sand mold. Casting a hammerhead with a hole going through the center requires the use of a core. To make one, I'll use this little core mold that I 3D printed. The inner profile matches the profile of the ever so slightly tapered hole in the hammer's head. I mixed some sand and sodium silicate together and then packed it into the mold. The sodium silicate in the sand hardens in the presence of CO2 which locks the sand together. With the pattern and core ready to go, it was time to start making a mold. For this mold, I'll use an oil bonded sand called Petrobond. This mold will be filled vertically, so to slow down the flow of the metal, I cut this odd looking wavy sprue. It's always best to fill a mold as quickly but as calmly as possible, so I was hoping this would do the trick. My plan was for the metal to flow down through the wavy sprue and rise up slowly into the mold. For this casting, I melted some scrap from previous projects as well as some brass plumbing fittings. I just started a new channel where I'll be posting non-narrated and music-free versions of my videos as well as other projects that don't quite fit on this channel. If you would like to check it out, I'll post a link in the description. It's always really satisfying to open a mold and see a successful casting. 
This thing turned out really well, so next I had to cut off the excess metal and start cleaning it up. My milling machine made quick work of cleaning up most of it, and I was really relieved to see that there were no voids or air bubbles in the casting like there was in the copper sledgehammer. Once I was finished with the machining, I sandblasted the text before polishing the entire thing with a die grinder. I thought the text could use some contrast, so I used a liver of sulfur to darken the brass behind it. Then I used this stuff called Neverdull to remove the patina from anywhere I didn't want it. I bought this hickory handle at a local hardware store. Hickory is one of the most common woods used as a hammer or axe handle because it's extremely strong while still being flexible. After cutting it to the right length, I went to work carefully fitting the hammerhead onto it. This was a tedious process and it took a few hours to complete, but there was really no way to rush it if I wanted it to look good. Once I had the hammerhead fitting properly, I spent some time shaping the handle to make it a little more comfortable to hold on to. I 
I really like the look of brass up against dark colored wood, so I decided to apply some stain to the hickory. I was a little worried that this would turn out looking cheap, but I was pleasantly surprised with the result. The hole in the hammerhead has a slight taper to it, which allows the wood at the top to expand when a wedge is pounded in, and that locks the hammerhead in place. Once I hammered in a wooden wedge and trimmed off the excess handle that was sticking out, I hammered in a little steel wedge which really ensures that the hammerhead will not come off. The last step was to use a little stain on the exposed wood and this hammer was done. Well I think this thing turned out really cool looking. The hammerhead ended up weighing about 5 pounds, while this copper hammerhead weighs about 6. I really like the color of the brass up against the dark wood, so I'm glad I stained the handle. Before I go, I wanted to give my brother a shout out. He's been working hard to create a YouTube channel, so if you think you'd be interested in a video like this, then go check it out. I'll post a link in the description. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed watching me make this, and if you did, please let me know what you think in the comments. Give the video a thumbs up and subscribe for future projects. As usual, I'll have affiliate links in the description for things I've used in this video, as well as things I'd recommend. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.